डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी वेलकम अगेन वी आर हियर फॉर वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन सब्जेक्ट सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन यूनिट वन फॉर ऑफ ऑफ ब्लॉक टू which was uh, regarding quality control and uh, capability maturity model and today we'll be seeing is unit 2 which is all about testing and its techniques uh, the name is software testing techniques uh, there uh, at the end of this uh, unit you'll be able to learn the types of testing there are various kind of testings uh, you'll be able to understand what is function test plan and what is process of testing so let us begin with this first is introduction now before we start what is uh, you know the testing techniques what are the testing techniques what is its process and all we first need to understand what is testing right uh, testing is nothing but a process of evaluating a software item to detect differences between given input and expected output so it says that uh, the given input would be something uh, you know xyz and you are not getting the output which you expected right so that evaluation process of that particular gap is nothing but testing right it says it helps you to assess the feature of a software item to understand that what all features are there within the software right we generally perform testing it is uh, you know like uh, uh, for example if you are if, when you are studying a particular topic right a particular unit after every unit probably a uh, madam or sir would be taking a unit test right just in order to check that how much you know about that particular unit so that is nothing but testing right similarly it even helps you to assess the quality of the software product so in order to understand the feature of my software product as well as in order to understand the quality of my software product this particular procedure is used that is testing is used it says it is usually done during the development process and in simple terms it is verification and validation process we uh, have seen in unit 1 of block 2 verification and validation right so testing basically is this process that is verification and validation where you check for a correct software being built and you check whether that particular software which you are building is at the correct correct pace that means the time right so uh, it is usually it starts from the development phase that is sdlc cycle development phase itself at the very initial level it starts and it continues till uh, the deployment is done right i'll come back to that slide too right then there are two basic techniques of testing usually if somebody ask you what is testing the very first thing that would come in mind to anybody who actually knows what is testing are two different techniques and they are known as one is black box testing and the other one is white box testing all right so we will see what is black box testing and what is white box testing all right uh, let us see the next slide it says that black box testing is a technique that ignores the internal mechanism of the system and focuses on the output generated against any input given all right so it doesn't check you know uh, basically black box testing is going to be an external kind of testing all right what all internal code you have put for getting that particular output that and all is not checked in black box testing it simply checks that some input is given and are you getting the expected output if yes black box testing is passed all right it is not going to check what kind of code you have used what branching you have done what looping you have done I mean branches and loops what all uh, conditional statements you have used it is not going to check any of this whereas whatever i spoke just now is the one which comes under white box testing just check it is a technique that takes into account the internal mechanism of the system so the internal code of your system starting from the uh, code then including database including your network communication the, the protocols that you would be using all that is being checked in your white box testing now major difference between both the testing is one is going to have an external uh, testing only and it is not going to fall into the logical part of it that is my black box testing 
right while the other one is going to check the internal code also that how you have coded what are the uh, conditional statements you have used is there any better way to include the functionalities in a different manner you know all those code and everything will be checked and that is my white box testing now second difference is its name black box testing is also known as functional testing while white box testing is also known as structural testing or a glass box testing. So, if somebody asks you what is structural uh, testing, it is nothing but your white box testing, glass box te testing is also nothing but white box, while functional is nothing but the black box testing. So, this basically is the difference between black box and the white box. Moving further, next topic is types of testing. Now, this particular also we will start with black box and white box. I will be showing you one simple diagram which will help you to understand that what is white black box, what is white block, uh, box and apart from that we will even see what are different other types of testing. All right. So, starting with the first one, of course, testing is done to check errors uh, done during coding a software. So, wh whenever you, you know, uh, do any mistake uh, while coding your uh, particular software, all right, then uh, for that, in order to find out that error, you testing is done. Secondly, uh, if uh, you know there is no error in your code, but sometimes you get bug in your code, all right. While executing your particular code, you get some bugs, bug. Then, uh, in order to find out that bug, also you do testing. And uh, testing is a procedure where you, you know, break into the system and you find out what all faults are there, all right. You actually, you know, search for the faults. So, testing is something where you break into the system, all right. Then, it must start in the early stages of development to reduce overhead cost and time to rework. So, testing is basically very beneficial in order to, you know, uh, reduce your overhead cost. So, you started from very beginning of the uh, SDLC. And when you start with that, so the rework that is there, even that rework is, you know, reduced, right. Testing begins with the requirements gathering phase in SDLC till the deployment of the product as said. It starts from the very initial phase of your requirements gathering, that is customer requirements gathering till its deployment of the product, right. Now, let us look at the types of software testing. So, very first I said is a black box testing. Right. It is based on requirements and functionality. Of course, its name also is functional testing, right? So, it is based on requirements and functionality without concerning the internal mechanism, that is the coding mechanism, what all code you have written to get, you know, a particular functional functionality, what all code you have written to, you know, fulfill some x, y, z requirement. That code and all is not looked into my black box testing. Just check this diagram. If you see this diagram, Right. It says an input is there, right. This input goes to an executable program which is nothing but your source code, right. And you get the output. Now, here you would be seeing my executable, pro executable program is something which is black and I do not check into that, right. So, whatever the code I have written inside this will not be checked, will not be tested. The only thing will be tested is that if I give one A input, I should get one A output. All right, whatever output, whichever, whatever I expected should be there on my screen, right. So, that is black box testing. Now, the next one if I see is my white box testing, all right. White box testing as said is going to look into your internal mechanism that is your software code, just read based on knowledge of internal logic of application. Internal logic means whatever you, you know, when you code, the logic that you write, all right, that logic of application code will be checked upon. Also checks the branches, path and conditional statements in the code. So, whatever looping structures you have used, whatever the uh, conditional statements you have used, even that and all will be checked into my white box testing. Just check this example, I mean the diagram. A tester is there. Uh, usually, yes, one more difference is, you know, uh, generally black box testing is applied externally, right. So, wherein you do not actually, you know, break into the system much, right. But white box is something in, in which you, you break into the system, you find out the code, you know, the uh, particular code, whatever you have written, you find out errors also in that code, you find out bugs into that code, right. So, basically white box testing is generally, you know, it is more uh, complex. Right, and we calculate cyclometric complexity and all for that. All right. So uh, here is a tester. 
A tester does a white box testing wherein he tests the database. So, first he tests the database, all right. Then he tests all the web forms that you have generated, that you have coded, all right. So, it tests the web forms, then it will test the source code also, all right. So, it will test the three things the backend, backend means your database, the front end, which includes your web forms and all. Right, and your source code whatsoever you have written to generate that particular thing, all right, and it then checks the result, whatever result you get. So, here this mechanism was actually black in my black box testing, right, because we were not checking on the database, we were not checking what all files were there, we, will not, we were not checking what you know source codes we had, we did not check into the web forms also, the de designing and all, right, but in white box we do that. So, this is basic difference between black box testing and white box testing. One is known as functional testing that is my black box and uh, the other one is called as uh, structural testing or uh, glass box testing which is nothing but my white box testing, right. Then third type of testing is unit testing, all right. Uh, unit testing says that uh, uh, the entire code is always divided into modules. I would have told you a number of times during my lectures, right, that we have a big program and that huge program is being divided into number of modules, right. Then this modules which we have are nothing but our units, units of our program, right. And the, the checking, the testing that we do for each individual module is nothing but the unit testing. Just check testing individual software components or my modules which is generally performed by the programmers all right is nothing but the unit testing and if you check no i mean if you observe uh, somewhere in the company unit testing is always done by the programmer who does the coding all right the developer who does the coding usually does the uh, unit testing that is uh, checking the errors into that modules right so that is unit testing uh, i hope you can see the diagram here Right, uh, unit test. It is nothing but a piece of code is taken. Piece of code can be a uh, entire module, all right, or maybe some uh, software components only, uh, the internal one. Right, then testing behavior is checked for its functionality, and this is unit testing. And unit test is a piece of code which tests behavior of a function or a class. So a particular function, or maybe a particular class, or maybe a particular module. All right, only that will be checked for its behavior. That what is the input that we are giving and what is the output that we gain out of that class or maybe out of that module or it is nothing but unit testing and unit tests are written by the developers as said that uh, unit tests generally are performed by the developers who write the code. Right? So that is unit testing. Let us see the next kind of testing. It is incremental integration testing. Now uh, we basically have uh, actually in general we call it as integration testing only right but uh, there are two approaches into integration testing one is bottom up approach and another one is top down approach all right so when i have an entire project and starting from that project if i divide it into different modules it is uh, and then i start scanning from top to bottom it is top down approach but i have different modules making a, another different modules and then making my huge one single project all right, then I start testing from the bottom is called as bottom up approach, right. So incremental integration testing is nothing but uh, the one which will have uh, the other one that is bottom up approach. It uses bottom up approach where application functions and modules are independent of each other, right. Whatever modules you have, all right, all that and uh, the functions that you have in, uh, you know, uh, used in that particular modules, all right, all this will be independent of each other programmers or tester both mind well the developers as well as the testers both can carry out this testing technique right and the other one which i said is integration testing this test is applied to test integrated modules now what happens is uh, we have done unit testing right so for example let us take one example in my, uh, one of the program that we have coded uh, we we take for an example that we coded five modules right so, uh, for that those five modules when I do the testing uh, of individual module it is called as unit testing. So, how many unit testing did we perform? We performed five unit testing. Now, combine this five modules with each other. So, first what I do is I combine one with my module two. Now, when I combine module one and two, 
I do the testing is nothing but the integration testing. We are doing the integration of modules, right? Then second, then I combine one two with my third module. So again, that is nothing but my integration testing. So this test is applied to test integrated modules in order to check combined functionality after the integration. So module one was having some x functionality, module two was having some y functionality, and module three was having some z functionality. Now I, when I combine all three, whether I'm getting the same kind of functionality or it is something different, you know, that is being checked in the integration testing. This is relevant to client, server, and distributed systems. All right. Now, here you would be seeing module A is there, module B is there. When I perform, you know, integration of module A and module B together, all right, I call it as integration testing, all right. Next is functional testing, which is again very, very easy. Uh, whatever testing techniques that we saw right now, right including I mean it is uh, starting from my unit testing then my uh, uh, integration testing right bottom up approach then uh, top down approach both the approaches all right when you combine all these things it comes to functional testing just check such type of testing ignores the internal parts and checks whether the output is as per requirement or not. Alright, so it ignores the internal part whatsoever internal logic that you have used alright anything of it that is being ignored here and it just check that whether whatever the uh, you know a uh, requ uh, requirement was there the user requirement whether that user requirement that which is specified is being you know uh, achieved or not is functional testing it is uh, you know another name of uh, black box testing right so black box testing also we used to avoid the internal logic that we develop you know how the project is developed how the code is developed Right. So, similarly in functional testing also we are not going to uh, you know we are going to ignore the internal part. So, we are not going to check the internal logic of it, but rather we will be just checking whether the output that we are getting is as per the user requirement or not. Right. Here you would be seeing we have unit testing, user acceptance, of course I will teach you what is user acceptance, regression, integration testing is there, system testing, I will teach all these three and all this makes up my functional testing. Right. Let us see the next testing technique is system testing all right a normal system testing which tests the full system as per requirements all right it is noted that the black box testing which is based on requirement specification covers every combined parts of system all right now what is system testing it says that you give some input you get some output right and all the events that come across in gaining this you know gaining uh, uh, the output from the uh, given input makes up your entire system right the entire product and to test that as per your customer requirement is nothing but the system testing all right so my customer would have given me some requirement all right now according to that requirement when i have built up one product my software product that is my system all right i give some input i get some output through the help of various events that i have all right and if this output is same and equal to the requirements that i had then i have passed my system testing all right it says that it is you know the as it is noted that the black box testing which is based on requirement specification covers every combined parts of system all right so it is uh, it is more or like a black box testing wherein they are not going to look into you know uh, much into the internal logic of course they'll be looking at but not much all right and they'll be combining just to get the output the required output as per the customer requirements next is uh, end to end testing all right now what is end to end testing uh, it is similar to system testing as it carries testing of complete application environment in the real time. All right. Now, when you have implemented your product, whatsoever product you have constructed, you have implemented, you have deployed it. All right. So, it checks starting from the deployment stage to its execution stage onto the server. So, from end to end. 
all right and it checks every thorough part that has you know that you have coded all right whatever the inputs you have given it checks for each and every input for, for and uh, respective output of it all right we call it as end to end testing it applies to interacting with database with the help of network communications or interacting with hardware applications or with systems of current so if you have you know uh, when we develop of course we have a backend right so backend what database we have used it checks the database also it checks uh, whether my network communication is proper all right if i have used some uh, external files then whether that external files are proper they are properly loaded or not everything is being checked in end to end testing here you would be seeing from one system to entire database network communications and everything it checks with the other system all right it is nothing but end to end testing let us see another type of testing which is called as sanity testing all right uh, we know what is sanitization right sanitization is nothing but you know uh, uh, the keeping something very clean cleaning up something right if i say that you uh, we we use hand sanitizer right uh, it it simply cleans our hand right so uh, let us see what is sanity testing it shows whether new software version performs well enough to take measure testing effort all right uh, we in the uh, Uh, unit uh, one third, uh, uh, sorry, block one, unit three. We did uh, version control, right? Where we saw that certain versions are very, very important in software, right? Uh, so software versions, whatsoever come, they are our latest version, and uh, whether they are able to take up all the test cases or not. I'll, I'll come across what are test cases, all right? And if there is, you know, it is not leading to a stable application. If my new version is not stable enough, then I of course have to sanitize my particular application. It says there are stable builds. All right. Now these stable builds are made to undergo sanity testing. All right. Sanity testing, if is not performed. All right. If you do not get a checklist, and if it is not performed, it does not give a particular output. Then those are going to be rejected. Those builds are going to be rejected. While those who undergo sanity test and they pass sanity test, we call them as passed builds. All right. And they will then reach to the further test. All right. That is sanity testing. Next is uh, regression testing, which is a very very important one. All right. This is used to test application as a whole for modification in module or functionality. Okay, regression testing is the one which will you know um, be used in any of the stages to uh, regressively check, rigorously check on uh, whether you need any updation or maybe you need to add certain functionalities in your module or not. And at any particular stage, you know, at any particular time of your software development, if you actually need to uh, include some functionalities, if you actually need to modify your module, then in that case, we have regression testing. All right, let us see what is regression testing. Regression testing retest all. All right. So whatever modules you have rebuilt, maybe some functionalities you have again added. All right. So retest all. Regression test selection is done, and prioritization of test cases is done with the help of my regression testing. All right. So it is nothing but a whole. Uh, 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 it is testing application as a whole for modification in module or any functionalities. All right. One of the most important testing. Then, next is acceptance testing. We call it as uh, acceptance test also. All right. Such testing is done so as to check whether the system meets the customer specified requirements or not. Now, uh, what are uh, you know uh, acceptance means? Uh, for example, if uh, I tell you that uh, uh, I, I give some statement, now you say whether it is true or false. If you find it true, you accept that statement. If you find no, this is wrong. Right? You do not accept that uh, that statement. So it says that whatsoever system that we build. All right, that system we build is for some customer, right? Now, whether that customer or maybe those end users who are going to use our system are going to accept our system or they will not accept our system is nothing but my acceptance testing. Such testing is done as to check whether the system meets the customer specified requirements or not. If my customer specified requirements are met, then I say it is, you know, true. Acceptance testing is done. If it doesn't meet, 
that means I am not supposed to you know use that particular module or maybe that particular system to be delivered to my that customer. All right. So, it checks the customer requirements all right if it, it is tested all right and if that customer requirements whatsoever were there are all fulfilled right then I can say I have passed the acceptance testing right then <coughs> next is alpha testing all right now what is alpha testing uh, this testing requires in-house virtual user environment where testing gets implemented at the end of development. We have two different kinds of testing usually done. One is alpha testing and the another one is beta testing. Now, alpha testing is something which internal people of the organization will test the application. All right. So, internal team, I hope you can see here, internal team will be checking whatsoever build you have done. Alright, so whatever software product you have established that will be checked by the internal team members of your own organization. Alright, so that is nothing but the alpha testing. Well, the other one is a beta testing which says that any other person outside your organization, maybe your end users, maybe your customers, maybe customers customer and they all will be checking up your system, whatsoever you have developed. All right. So, any person who is not inside your organization and does the testing for you, all right, for your application, then it is called as beta testing. It is a type of software testing which is mostly performed at user's end. It is form of final testing which is done before the release of application for commercial purpose. All right. So, that is what is beta testing. All right. Summarizing the session. In this uh, session, we will learn software testing all right, and its need, why do we require actually why a software needs to be tested, right. What are the testing, you know, uh, two, two basic types of testing, we, we generally have two basic types of testing is white box and black box. Then we saw what are testing techniques, different testing techniques are there, we actually saw 13 types of uh, testing, right, sanity testing, regression testing, unit, integration, the bottom up and top down approach. All right. We saw what is functional testing, what is system testing, end to end. Uh, there are other different testing also. For example, stress testing is there, performance testing is there. All right. So all this kind of testing is there. All right. In the next session, what we will see is we will continue with the same unit that is software te uh, testing techniques only, and we will see functional test plans and process of testing. So, in the next unit, we will see what is functional test plan. Now, functional test plan is, uh, I would just briefly tell in a minute, functional test plan is something where we actually plan the test cases, all right, and uh, to check the various functionalities that are there inside our module, we check for that, all right. So, that is called as functional test plan. We will see what is process of testing, all right. We have different steps you know to in order to check the testing in order to perform the testing so that is coming under process of testing so we will continue further with the uh, in the next session for the same uh, unit right thank you till then